I'm very excited for our conversation. My name is Miriam. I'm a community manager here at Entra, and we're streaming this live today with Dago from Logoology. We're going to be chatting a lot about Twitter strategies and all of his work as a founder building his company over the last few years. I would love to take your questions. You can chime them in. We're using a platform called Entra, so you can join us in the chat, raise your hand to come up on stage, or if you're watching this later, comment in your questions and I'll make sure that Dago sees them and answers them um, if, if you're looking at this later in after the live recording or whatever, whatnot. But let's jump in with some introductions. So Dago, you're a product designer, software developer, for years, you've been helping startups figure out kind of what their best product is. Yeah. How do you skillfully go about building a product? And then you also have Logoology, which is what we're going to talk a little bit about today. Um, but before we jump into that, I wanted to ask you, you know, how, are, how do you identify it? Would you say you're an indie hacker? Are you a maker? Are you an entrepreneur? Yeah, I, I kind of like indie hacker because it gives a, an idea of being uh, independent. Because you can be a startup founder, but you can be, you know, you can raise funds or you can do it, you know, independently. And I kind of like identify a lot of the independent size, you know, not raising money, bootstrapping, you know, and stuff like, you know, with, with our savings. And that's kind of like uh, what I like the most about the journey is about it's a journey of freedom, creating a company and trying to build kind of like the life I always dreamed of having, you know, like that's, that's really what, what it's about for me. Nice. Yeah. I just discovered the indie hacker community last year and have been loving it so far, getting, getting involved in, in everything that they're doing over there. Um, let's talk a little bit about Logoology, right? So Logoology, for those of you guys that don't know, it's a really simple, easy to use product. It bridges the gap between working with a designer who really gets the heart and the meaning of what a logo should be and takes all of that and you can quickly generate these types of crafted logos online. So you, you've somehow figured out a way to achieve that level of quality that's really high that you'd get from a one-on-one -on -one relationship with a designer, um, but doing it now automatically and for a tenth of the price. So why don't you tell us a little bit about Logoology and how it all came to be? Yeah, so Logoology, it's really like a common effort with my wife, who is a logo designer. And so I'm not a logo designer, you know, as she is, but we saw like, so she was like a consultant creating brands for startups and companies. And we saw like so many people coming to her be like, hey, I have a new startup. I would love to work with you. Uh, you know, can we do something? And she'd be like, yeah, okay. Like a project starts at like $3,000 to get started. And they would be like, oh, that's way too much. I'm just <laughs> starting. I have like a hundred or $200, you know, and she would have no solution to them. Cause like, if you want a real brand, like real brand identity, real branding work, it's impossible at that price. And so we had this idea of trying, to, I mean, the problem was how do we give these people a good solution? That's really what we started with is like, we know there is demand for it. You know, everybody needs a logo. A lot of people are into branding, but how do we make it affordable for these people? And so basically what we try to do is we try to automate as much as we could. And so Logology, that's what it is. Like my wife, when she designs a logo, it's three steps. It's first figure out the values of the company and the vision and what kind of logo they need. So usually she does a workshop, like it's gonna be like a one day workshop. She goes to the clients and she works with them, you know, like post-it notes and like brainstorm tons of ideas for their brand and then figure out, okay, I know your brand identity now. So on Logology, it's a quiz. Like it took us months to figure out that simple thing, but it's basically just a quiz, five minute quiz. And at the end of it, we're able to tell you, okay, this is your brand personality. So that's the first step. And second step is designing the logos. So usually she would just make them, uh, you know, completely custom from, for someone based on their exact needs. 
And with Logology, what we did is like, we decided to uh, focus on specific type of companies. So startups, we're really focused on startups. And what it allowed us to do is it allowed us to kind of like split startups into different brand personalities and different industries. And so that made it possible for us to design logos ahead of time for each of these uh, you know, possibilities. Oh. So my wife just worked like crazy uh, designing tons of logos. She designed more than 700, I think so far. Like she's just incredible Amazing. at designing logos. You know? She had like 15 years, experience, 15 years experience. And she was like, I mean, even when she was a, a consultant, she would do more than people expected. Like people would like pay for like two or three concepts and she would do seven because she had so many ideas. So for Logology, it's perfect because she just can do that all the time and she has all that creativity. So basically she created hundreds of logos ahead of time. And with Logology, we're going to match you with the right one, you know, instantly, automatically. And then you can buy a license for it, like in a few minutes. So yeah uh, and the third step i didn't i failed to mention is at the end refining the logo with like picking the exact font or color that you want based on the designer proposals so we automated that by offering people a way to kind of like customize it but with enough boundaries that you can't have an ugly looking logo like it's always going to be vetted choice choices that my wife prepared ahead of time so it's really like we made her into kind of like an automated system Okay. You know, behind the scenes, it's her who worked tirelessly to create all the possibilities. The end result is like an automated version of her. You know, that's okay. that's that was the vision of an experienced brand designer. Yeah. So cool, like a little AI. Yeah. And that's that's fun. Yeah, just, so, yeah. how did you two come up with the name together? So, you know, funny thing is, the first name was Logo Story or logo stories, I think, uh, because it just made a lot of sense because it's all about understanding the story of your startup and then making it into an actual design. But it was trademark in France, so we kind of like gave up on it because it was too complicated to, you know, somebody already owned it. Mm -hmm. um, so we started brainstorming again and Logolo and we stumbled upon Logology because Logology actually means, like it's a word that exists and that means the science of discourse or something like that. Like it's about uh, what symbols means, like what, you know, it, it's all about meaning. It's all about the meaning of symbols and the meaning of shapes. And, and so we, we thought, well, that's exactly what we do. Like we give meaning to like, it's like meaningful logo design. Like it's meaningful design to match your stuff. So, you know, we, but it took like, it was very painful. Like it was basically so happy. Yeah, we're going to call that logo story. It's going to be awesome. And then, oh, wow, we can't use it. It's trademark. And then being so desperate and spending three weeks, you know, bumping off ideas and brainstorming and like eventually, okay, this is going to be the one. And at first we didn't even like it because we were so exhausted. So we didn't yeah. even have logology, but eventually we went with it and now we actually love it. And I think it's even better than the first one. But. Yeah. I like it better than Logo Story for sure. Yeah. I think it's cool. It's got a it's kind of like different, but still very easy to remember and relates to what you guys are working on. So it's a good one. And it must be cool to work with your wife and build together. You guys have been bootstrapping this. Uh, when did you start? So we started September 18. So that's three and a half years ago now. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a long time. Uh, yeah, basically, you know, I really, I had been saving money from my previous job as a software engineer. And, you know, I was just waiting for the moment to quit and just do something of my own. And, you know, eventually I did. And my wife, who was still a freelance and like a consultant at the time, she wanted to do something different too. Like she was kind of tired of that after 10 plus years of doing that. And so, yeah, we decided to go. And, and it's actually important for us to bootstrap because we're doing this, you know, because we want to make money. Like, you know, we want to be rich with our startup, like everyone, like we have dreams of that. But deep down, we also mostly want freedom. That's like really the most important for us. Right. We want to be free of working on our own thing in on our own terms. And it feels like having investors would be 
you know, it's always going to be a compromise of like, okay, you have someone who's looking to get, you know, their money back. And even more than that, actually, they want you to do, you know, certain things to get there. And we felt like it's not going to be helpful for us, for what we want to do. So in the end, we decided to bootstrap. And when we were kind of running out of money, she took a bit of contracting work again, you know, like okay. from Logology, a lot of people ask us for like custom logo design work. So we can even be picky about it because we can just be like, yeah, okay, we're just going to take one, you know, every two months or so just to keep us afloat while Logology takes off. And, you know, so that was kind of like a balance to find. But now hopefully we're like close to profitability so we can just focus on it fully. Nice. Good for you guys. Congratulations. I love hearing those stories um, of success coming from uh, indie hackers that you guys are like basically almost full time just working on your passions. That's the goal for sure. Uh, and since 2018, that's definitely been a long journey. I know that when we initially met, which I believe was through Founders Club, so shout out to Anthony Castrio from Indie yep. Worldwide and all of that. Um, we connected and you were telling me about Twitter and how Twitter really has become great for you. So would love to share with those that watch the, the episode here. Tell us a little bit about your Twitter best practices and uh, your thoughts around growing a Twitter following. Yeah. Yeah. So it's funny. Um, I've never thought I would do anything social because my dream was I'm just going to be in my cave, work on my product and somehow find a way to make money with it. But and have users but without talking to people if i can like if i can avoid it that was kind of like my goal like i think a lot of people and i realized okay it's not possible and so eventually i was pretty desperate with twitter and all that and i just i mean with marketing and i tried many things i tried ads i tried you know blogs i tried reddit communities and eventually i tried twitter and i got some success you know i got uh, lucky with a viral tweet i replied to someone and it got kind of i mean see my viral and it got me a few sales and i was like uh -huh. oh shit there's something i can do with that and so that was like eight months ago and so right now you're showing my profile and eight months ago i had like 150 followers so 100 times oh less God. basically <laughs> eight months ago and but because like it's it had and at that time it had been like three years since we started the startup and we were making almost no money because even though the product was good, like people loved it, there was almost nobody who actually, uh, you know, knew about it. Nobody knew about us. And so I basically, after, I stumbled upon Twitter and I was like, okay, I have nothing else to lose. Uh, we need to make this work. So I'm just going to try to grow my Twitter audience. You know, I'm just going to try to do that. So it's funny now, you're showing some memes I did recently. Uh, <laughs> basically, the, the memes, it's funny because I didn't start with that. I just started, you know, sharing my experience, uh, you know, my story as a startup founder. And I did memes initially. I just did memes for fun. Like I was having fun with my friends, like a couple of friends I had on, on Twitter. And I was just wanting to make them laugh. And so my first meme, there was like two likes, three likes. Uh, now it's getting pretty advanced, like video memes, as you can see. <laughs> but basically, uh, the whole idea is... I mean, by connecting with people, I mean, Twitter, I think the, the mistake I made, and I think a lot of people make, is we treat P Twitter like a TED Talk. Like, we're just going to broadcast our amazing thoughts to the world, and mm -hmm. they're going to love it. Like, that's how we think Twitter is. But what I noticed is it's not what Twitter is. I mean, it maybe if you're, like, amazing, like, if you're, like, Elon Musk, yeah, sure. But, like, if you're just, like, a normal guy or, like, a startup founder, it's all about connecting one-on-one -on -one with people. So going to people's profile, looking at what they do, I mean, their, their content on Twitter, interacting, engaging, engaging with people all the time and trying to build connections, but not like in a you know, networking fake way, but in a, that's the beauty of Twitter is like, it's pretty authentic. It's not like LinkedIn where it's just like very, everybody seems like to be wearing a suit when they use LinkedIn. Well, on Twitter, it seems like everybody's just like chilling, uh, but yet it, you can talk about work. And so, yeah, on Twitter, it's all about connecting with people. And the beauty of it is by doing that now. Uh, so as you see, like I have more followers, but even better than followers is like people give a shit about what I do now. Like mm. people give a shit about logology. 
because I told, I mean, the memes is like, like a fun thing, but I also told the story of like, I mean, every day I try to tell a story about my startup. So like, it can be hard at times to find ideas, but basically it's all about sharing my experience. And what, what happens is other startup founders relate to it. And because good news is startup founders, well, they're my target customers. So they relate okay. to my story, they connect with me. And when they need a logo, well, you know, they come to Logology. It's, yeah. it's pretty simple when you think of it that way. What do you think is spam on Twitter? Like what stuff should people completely just stay away from if they want to grow their Twitter following? So I think, okay, so this first one, I'm going to, the first one is going to be controversial, but to me, it's first promoting your tweets. Like, like promoting your tweets. Yeah. Okay. Like, even if it's just like, I'm not talking about cheating, just talking like going to Twitter, clicking on Twitter promote, paying 10 bucks so it gives you more reach, you know, just a basic thing. This is going to kill your reputation on Twitter because at least me and the people I know, so that's my limited experience. The 15,000 followers that you have. Yeah. But like whenever you see someone with a promote, with sweet, like you see a tweet and you're going to like it. Oh, it's a good tweet. And then you see promote it. And then it instantly it makes me feel, and a lot of people feel that, okay, this is not valid. Like, cause then you cannot trust that he got, uh, that he got likes and he got engagement from a real way and he just bought and they just bought it. Right. And that's just like a big red flag on Twitter is, are you promoting your tweets? Like it's like a big red flag. Uh, so I would stay away from that. And then spam is, um, whatever you do that i mean it's very funny because i now that i have a lot of followers people come to i mean it didn't happen like three months ago but now people spam on my tweets it didn't happen before but now people comment on my tweets and share whatever shit they want to share you know and like they don't they disregard the fact that i'm tweeting something and they could engage they're just like go to my site you know my crypto site whatever you know kind oh of God, yeah and but some people do it and I like it. And so the, the difference is, is it relevant? Is it done with like kind of uh, humility? Like, and do you, are you trying to be nice and to bring value? And, or are you just trying to plug your product? You know? And so I think it's, it's a fine line, but basically if you see someone, let's say, talk about productivity tips and you have a productivity app and you, can react to their content in a way that brings value to the conversation and then go, Hey, by the way, I'm working on this product. Maybe it can be interesting. That's awesome. You know, that's bringing value. That's engaging. That's cool. But if it's someone talking about, I don't know, like, like me talking about startups and someone saying, Hey, check my, my crypto project. Well, that's just spam. So I think spam, it's interesting because it's not like binary. It, it's really subtle. Like the same post can be seen as spam or not, depending on context. So, you know, basically it's, it, and I think that a lot of mistakes we make is we treat social media as different than real life, but it's really like real life. Like you're with people, you are, you're with people at a party. Are you going to just like not say hello, not say anything, not give a shit about anyone and then say, Hey, come to my party tomorrow. Like, no, it doesn't work. Like you, you right. need to kind of like mingle and then eventually, you know, connect with people. And then if it's relevant, plug your product, people will love it. I love that. And just so people know, uh, again, we were talking a little bit about the strategy that Doggo had used on Twitter. In the last eight months, he grew from like 150 followers to over 15K. He's the founder of Logology, Logology, excuse me. Yeah. And so in the very beginning, I remember you said, you know, you were tweeting quite a lot. It was kind of something you were really focused on. Um, and any questions you guys have, type them into the chat so that we can get those answered about how to grow on Twitter. If you, if you're trying to leverage that, we've got Dago here and he's done it very successfully. His tweets are awesome. Um, so definitely to uh, reach out and what's one piece. So on Twitter today I saw, and I had wanted to ask you this question before because so many people are engaging with you on your tweets. And then I saw today that Anthony had posted a little bit about, you know, that bad advice is so readily available. So I wanted to ask you, like, what's one piece of 
well-known, you know, startup advice that you think is just complete BS that people should not listen to? Well, I think it's the main topic of my tweets right now. It's helping people see they should focus on marketing more, more than product. And so it's not specific advice, but it's like, you know, I read many startup books before uh, building my own startup. I was like consuming tons of content about it. And now that I'm doing it, I noticed this advice is for startups who are, who have BC funding usually, who have mm. a to on. And so they're going to tell you amazing ideas. And I really think these are amazing concepts, like crossing the chasm, uh, you know, crossing the chasm, stuff like, uh, uh, what is it, you know, unfair advantage, you know, big words for startups. And there are some things to think about. But when you look into it and you're like just bootstrapping a tiny startup or you're just starting out and maybe you want funding, but you don't have it right now, these words and this kind of advice is kind of like not going to help you because it's more like right. for when you have money for when you can grow and you can have like okay let's throw a million dollars on facebook ads and do some experiments you know awesome but like when you have when you're starting out you don't have that no and so i think i think sadly there's very little knowledge and like uh, books about that about how you start when you're really tiny and you're just trying you know without funding and anything uh and so my advice would be to focus mostly on experimenting yourself and finding communities of people like you but basically my advice is like i mean the advice i would i would advise people to not read too much into the big startup books because it doesn't necessarily apply to you if you're tiny and it's a trap because it can make you overthink everything and try to to answer questions that you don't need to answer so yeah i, I hope yeah. it's helpful because I, I i i'm afraid to sound confusing but. no that's great um, all right, let's dive back into a little bit about Logoology, and this could be this is going to be maybe a little fun. Even though your wife is the designer, I'd still like to get your thoughts. Yeah, yeah. On some I'm of these. three and a half years helping her. Okay, that's okay, gonna, good. That's going to be a fun one. Okay. I'm pulling up some popular logos that we know and getting Doug's yeah. opinion on them because this one right here was very controversial. This is oh, their was, I, I didn't follow the, the story, but that's very funny because right now we're working for a client doing a productivity app. Uh, uh -huh. you know, the custom contracting work we do while the automated part takes off. And we looked into this one and my wife and I yesterday were like, damn, this one is bad. Like, and, and, and I know it's tough. I mean, and I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, mean or anything. It's just my opinion. I mean, our opinion, I'm not, placing myself as like the authority or anything okay right right but, but uh, basically at least to me like it doesn't it's just a mess like it, it's the, the drawing is good like i mean fine i would say but it's just it's not about the drawing it's about the meaning like it, it doesn't mean anything it doesn't evoke <sighs> anything it's just kind of like a blurb of whatever yeah. and and again uh, you need to know what's going on inside the company to really judge it so i'm right. not going to give a definite judgment about it but at least for me as like a, a viewer it's like it's nothing like it's just a weird looking thing i mean it can be considered beautiful like aesthetically but it doesn't mean anything anyway it's 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 like i mean it it, it lost me this one completely lost me i rather have the previous one they had that was very humble very simple very basic just like a calendar with a c in it uh, you know, it was much better in my opinion, even though the drawing wasn't as advanced aesthetically, it was basic, but at least you could identify something, you know? So, yeah. And I'm not yeah, talking this... about, and you can have an, a logo that's like abstract and that doesn't, that doesn't represent anything like Nike or whatever. You can have something that's abstract, mm -hmm. but it doesn't even evoke a uh, feeling. So I don't know. That's just how I feel. You know, that's, yeah. that's pretty, that's just how I feel. Part of me wondered whether they did it just for the PR because it was very just like, what, why? And the colors, it's so odd, but, and I love Calendly. I use it yeah, so much. Yeah, I use it too, yeah. Yeah, definitely. But um, yeah, that one is just kind of odd. What about this one? So I actually didn't know, this is actual logo of uh, Alphabet from Google? Yeah. Okay, I had no idea. 
So I, I know I, I had to Google it and I did some investigating. And I'm pretty sure this is it. And I was just like, really? Fuck. Yeah. Okay. No. So I guess it does. I mean, it doesn't really matter that it's so basic because it's just a holding company. Nobody cares. It's not okay. customer facing. Yeah. So in that case, I'm like, you know, fine, whatever. Like it doesn't matter for their marketing mm. anyway. So it's not know. their main thing. Everybody knows the G. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. And I think this is the red that they use. So they're staying fluid with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you mean. All right. What do you think about this one? This was another one that somewhat blew up on Twitter. So this one is cool. I mean, it's, uh, it shows like, it's like the infinity sign, but like with a twist on it. So it shows like a lot of possibilities. I mean, aesthetically it's cool. It's well done. So yeah, I mean, this one is, this one is good. I would say this one is good. I like this one. Yeah. On Twitter, a, a founder came out and showed his logo for his company and looked very similar to this. And he was like, Facebook, Meta, whatever, stole my logo. Is what if something like that happens? If you so, have done a logo and someone else does your logo, is there, can you do something about that? So, I mean, it's very complicated because at the end of the day, every logo you see right now, it's probably been done in the world at least once because you can't do. 10 billion different logos like you have some limits to how many shapes you can do and how many you know things you can represent so with so many companies it's bound to happen that some are going to have the same logo so what matters is mostly is it competing and causing confusion in people so if they're doing a social network then it's going to be confusing but mm -hmm. if they're doing a car company then it's not confusing now obviously with the you know financial power of facebook and meta they're going to be crushed and it's bad luck for them and it's just terrible but at right. the end of the day if you're just two companies it's all about is it creating confusion like for example when calendly had the calendar icon if another company used the calendar icon with their letter in it and instead of a c it was like an s or whatever then I would say like it's kind of confusing and it can be infringing. It's, it's like damaging. But end of story, it's more like of a legal problem and like a rights problem. And how and does it confuse its customers? But in terms of aesthetics, sadly, any kind of logo you see online, you can probably find another one like it. Like, I mean, like, you know, oh. in a different industry, in a different country, in a different kind of audience. But it's very, I mean, especially with, the trend right now of very simple symbols like this one, or like the mm -hmm. ones with technology, very simple, very universal symbols, not like a crazy illustration with tons of details. Well, you know, the simpler you are, the likelier it is that it's going to be used by other people. And it shouldn't be the main focus, I feel. Uh, yeah. It should be more like, you know, the story you tell around it. We got another one. This one was just popped in by one of our uh, okay. members. This is their logo. Give a, give them an honest opinion, true feedback, virtual insanity. Okay. So the thing that I think is not clear to me is it doesn't, I mean, okay. The first thing is it shows very, a lot of, um, it's assertive, like it's pretty aggressive because it's pointy and it's orange. So both together, it's pretty aggressive. So it means the bias towards action. So it makes me feel that the company is like dynamic and, you know, gets things done. It's something like very, you know, like that. That's what it evokes. So mm -hmm. I don't know if it's good or bad, but like if that's what the company wants to evoke, then that's good, you know. But if it's just, uh, if you want to sell, you know, baby diapers, then it's bad. But if you want to <laughs> sell like coaching services, it's probably good. You know, it depends on that. It depends on what you want to sell. Totally. But, well, they very action oriented. Yeah, the mainstream in the metaverse, I, yeah, and like with the bolts. So I guess yeah, it's pretty dynamic. So yeah, I think uh, I think visually maybe you know it, it could be a bit improved, but at least I mean what matters is in branding. It's not just like how aesthetic is the drawing. It's like does it explain the 
okay, cool. Okay, I, I see the person responding. But like, uh, yeah, I mean, what matters is like, does it convey the meaning? And it seemed like it does. So in that case, I would say it's good. You know, it's, it's good. It's, it's, it's a good one. Awesome. Okay, great. Love that. We got some feedback there. Um, we got to put it up. What do you think about this one? Be brutal, be honest. Well, I would say it's the best one with meta because visually it's good. You know, it's like aesthetically it's well done, like it's balanced. And now the two things that come to mind, so the arrow to the top, always good to have an arrow to the top because it shows like progression and it shows aspire, you know, aspiring to, you know, something and growing, growing up and stuff like this, which is what it seemed like you're about. So it's awesome. And then the colors, it's a very corporate serious thing. So it tells me that it's about business. So, you know, to me, it seems very solid because I think that's what, ent uh, you know, Entra is about. So yeah. Yeah. It's a awesome. really good one. Okay, yeah. cool. We are dabbling around with doing a new one, but that's good. I'm going to pass along that feedback. Okay. What about this one? What do you think about this little logo here? Okay. This is a so, well-known un, uh, undercover brand based out of Miami. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I get you. So, okay. My wife would say it's not a logo. So that's oh. just the bad thing. But the reason she would say that is that the, the drawing is very complex. And because it's complex, like if you had to put that in a very tiny shape, like, like on a, like very tiny kind of like on a sweater, like a brand it would be very hard to read and distinguish, you know, what the shoe, how it is, because it's too many uh, details. So that would just be the designer eye. Yeah. But again, I like to come back to the meaning. And so, and also it depends on context, like depending on how you're going to use it. Like it's you, if you only use it on the website, it's, I mean, it's cool. Like it really depends on like, where it's going to be used and the sizes and all that. Uh, Interesting. But for that, I would say, uh, so to stay on the aesthetic side, I would say the font could use to be a bit bolder, uh, like a bit more weight to it, because it looks like a bit unbalanced with the shoe that takes all of the attention. Mm -hmm. But like bootstrap publication is too much in the background because it's too light, you know, and it doesn't match how big and it you know and uh, the, the shoe is related to it and then uh the shoe itself is cool i mean the drawing is cool so now i wonder like i, I think the thing that confuses me and i think that's why i think uh, it would need a bit uh, of improvement is that the i don't know if it's for if it's something for kids shoes but mm -hmm. I, I i assume not because it's called publications so it's about bootstrapping you know uh, some you know so it's telling me that yeah but basically it's confusing me because the shoe is like has very childlike colors yeah plus it's a kid's shoe it seems so yeah you're telling me too much about this is for kids and uh -huh. this is confusing me basically okay well so it's this is the children's book division of my publishing company Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I see what I mean. So it's okay. a little mini boot and it has a lot of meaning. You know, I'm an artist, but I, you know what? I think what we, we should do is dive in because what I love about your, if I, I'm just going to call them like roasts, right? If you want Doggo to roast your logo, just go ahead and send him a, a note on Entra. I'm sure he'd be happy to give you some ideas yeah. and tips, but I would love to, you know, the point is with some of these that you're telling is that you know, the logo, it's your, it comes down to your brand identity, right? It comes down yeah. to your values. And, and so I want people to see how easy it is to, if you have already basic inspiration, you know what your brand is about, you can come to logoology.com. We're going to drop the information right there into the chat. And in five minutes, you don't even have to put in your credit card to get started with it. It's very simple. So we're going to just do a really quick demo. Let me find the. You can have can on the top right, right. Click on the top right. Yeah. Perfect. So apparently you already took oh, it. So, I did. So yeah, I'm going to give you a special link just for you. Okay. Um, 
that's what you want to dm it to me otherwise if you put it in the room chat at all no, i mean no it's, it's, it's not I'm, I'm just saying just for you to be funny but like it's not like it, it's it's nothing crazy <laughs> oh, perfect, okay perfect so it's just like a small parameter okay, let me see and yeah i okay i did this. this okay let's grab this perfect excellent yeah, because I was already playing around with it, and that's how I know. Like, it's very easy to use, so quick. Okay, so let's okay. retake this questionnaire. We're gonna. I just made up a look a thing for myself. Let's do cool. Bootstrap publications because why not? We need to kind of redo that. This is going to be media. So what's, the main, what's the main one? What's the, so it's about. It can be, it, I, would, I would have said, yeah, communication seems like a good one for that. Or, or, or if it's for kids, you had education. I would have picked education for kids, actually. Okay, yeah. let's do that. Let's do education. Yeah. Details about your activity will help us prioritize. Um, we publish books for first-time authors who consider themselves artists. Nice. You need to understand the vision and values of your startup. Okay, great. Determine my startup personality. If my startup was a superhero, it would be Wonder Woman. I still like that. I think. Let's see. Mm. These are so good. I love these. This would be probably fit it the most. Definitely accessible, young. We're, we're an early That's, stage yeah. boutique publisher. Yeah. We want to help everybody. Yes. If it was a famous figure. So just to let people know, it's because you already took the questions earlier that you have a pre-selected answer each time. But yeah, that's, that's the only reason why you see warm in black. Okay, I think I'm going to go with this one because we make, we go through a lot of learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Definitely the ant. Publishing a book actually takes a lot of different steps and so it's work 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 I'm just reading over these really quickly okay it's a movie mm -hmm. this one definitely i think milk would fit it and easy and accessible perfect okay this one so you're taking this fun little quiz as people can see and then once you're done Okay, my typical customer. Oop, I gotta go back there. Oh, okay, the other one is edgy and hip. All right, my service is disruptor. Definitely differentiate and calculation. And then you get this cool little summary. You can either go back and say, okay, this, was, this isn't right. Or you confirm, you can also view other choices. Do you think it fits? Does it fit you? It seems like it does. I liked it. Yeah, cool. And then it's going to be processing in the back end. And I was like rushing through this because we're on we're live. So you see how quickly it is though. And it's fun. It was like a, a game kind of that I got to play going through this. And everybody recommend just hop on, go try it out, see what you're gonna get for your logo and then it just spits it out for you my internet's running a super slow today but we're gonna get yeah, my logo I'm here worried, but i don't know what could cause this it's really weird but maybe it's just it should be it's like only a couple of seconds but i don't know what's happening it's definitely my wi-fi because i'm streaming i'm sharing so while we're waiting okay, for yeah. that to pop out um let's 
I, I want to get your opinion on cryptocurrency. Like every, I know every conversation gets to go yeah. to Web3 these days, but like, what are your thoughts on crypto, Web3, and all of that? Well, I have some crypto just for fun and to about, avoid missing out. But I was lucky because I got some Bitcoin, I think, five years ago. And it kind of like 10 x in value. So I sold enough to get back my money. And now I still have like some money in it, but it's just for fun. Cause like, I'm like, you know, I'm, it's money I earn from crypto. So I'm just, I just can play with it. So it allows me to experiment. So I bought some crazy, you know, what they call shit coins uh, last year. That okay. was, basically, you know, but like things like dog coins and stuff like this, just to, just to experiment and see how it was like. And my thoughts are, I don't want to miss out. And things like Bitcoin and Ethereum seems like they're going to stay. But to be honest, I don't understand any of it. I mean, I understand the premise, but I don't understand what would make it an actual good thing. However, I believe I don't need to understand it. It's just about placing a small bet on it, putting some money on it, just to be sure to not miss out. Mm -hmm. But I don't understand it, to be honest. And I feel like, and the second thing about that is, over the years, I've learned to be careful with like jumping on new technology. Because I used to like, when I was in my 20s, every time there was a new tech, I would just jump on it. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be, get into that. Oh, I need to get into AI. Oh, I need to get into whatever. Now people are like, oh, I need NFTs. And now it's gonna be, oh, I need Web3. You know, I need to get into all these new things. And I think, now my strategy is a bit more laid back it's like when something new comes out i don't care i mean i avoid it and like okay. if like three years after that it's still on the news then i get interested because yeah okay. it's going to be dead anyway and it's just going to waste my time so i might miss out but usually even doing that you don't really miss out because like you're still super early like i invested in crypto five years ago it was still freaking early even though it yeah. was only five years after yeah. everyone and so i think it's a safe strategy you know to to not get crazy because else you don't do anything with your life because you're always jumping from new right like, new tech to new tech and mm -hmm. it's a new one every six months mm -hmm. so you never get to solidify everything anything so yeah would you guys ever think about accepting a cryptocurrency for your uh logology yeah i mean i don't mind i don't have anything against that uh it's just that it's probably just like a technical thing that i wouldn't want i see someone said logo coin uh that logo could, coin that could be an idea but uh why not but yeah i mean i mean i have nothing against it it's mostly that right now i'm like okay it would take time to kind of like implement the payment processing in itself you know and all the how do I manage taxes and stuff like this? So it was just, yeah, I, I'm just pragmatic on like, is it going to really help me? It doesn't think, I don't think it's going to uh, help with sales. And I'm trying to focus right now on like what's helping my customers, what's serving a need. And I'm like, okay, crypto, accepting crypto, why not? But like, does it help me? Not necessarily. So, you know, it's not high priority, but I have nothing against it. So. Yeah. And what about, uh, France, are they cool with it or are they just like not about it? You mean brands in general, like big companies? Like the government. I don't see what you mean. I don't understand what you mean. Like, are they supportive of cryptocurrencies or are they kind oh, of not? No, I think, I think it's always the same. Sadly, it's like you're going to have. Uh, two types of people mostly you're gonna have people against it because it strengthens their interest so you're gonna have government you're gonna have you know established uh you know financial institutions established companies that are threatened by it and then you're gonna have people who pretend like it's gonna change everything and maybe it does but they don't know but they're gonna claim like it does so right. they can get money from you and they can convince you so i feel like it's a sad and then you have people in the middle who just want to know what you know is it worth talking into but i feel like it's this phase of like polarization you know when, when you see everywhere i think with crypto is the same it's now you know it's like people just fighting like a trenches war and like it's just just not very helpful to anyone so i i don't think most businesses are for it 
uh, but it's also because you know it comes down to the utility what does it help and, and it's funny that's what i said naturally when you asked me mm -hmm. how does it help my business like there's not a clear case for it you know it's right. not so that's also why it's not adopted like if it solved an actual problem i mean i think a lot of businesses would be into it Tots. Very good per, to get your perspective. Um, my logo is still kind of doing its thing, my, but I can maybe hear my just, computer. Maybe just like, got stuck, so you can try to refresh the page manually. You should probably unstuck it because okay. maybe, maybe what happened is like your connection dropped and it kind of like you know, made it lose its mind. Totally. It should, it should be good now if you refresh. Okay. We're trying to see. I'm refreshing it. Um, still kind of loading, but before we... I know we're getting to the top of the hour here. Uh, product hunt. I would definitely want to just make sure that I stay on your radar and make sure that everybody, I want to drop your product hunt profile in so that people can follow you on product hunt. But what is, talk us through like what your product hunt strategy is because everyone's is different, you know? So, you know, uh, you need to take this, with a grain of salt because I haven't launched yet. <laughs> so right. it's going to be pretty weird, but I saw a lot of friends launch and my takeaway, which is going to inform my strategy is there's two ways of launching. You either launch when you're getting started and it's a way to get your first user and to get feedback. And in that case, you might get a bit disappointed because you're not going to get a lot of traction probably but you're going to get your first users and your first feedback. So it's a good way to like kickstart a project that you just launched. And I think that was initially the intention with product and that's what it was about. Uh, but I think the best strategy now and the one I'm following is you wait until you have a pretty solid product, happy customers, you build some kind of audience around it. And that way, when you launch, you have all that momentum with you and it propels you to the first places you know, of the day or whatever. And then it can become kind of like a catalyst because it can just you know, get kind of like viral because of this initial push, which is almost impossible without it. And from that, it can open up more opportunities. Like it can, well, product hunt, but beyond it, because then if you have a successful product hunt launch, you can like use the, ba the badge like product of the day, which is good for conversion rates. Mm -hmm. You can maybe contact the media to be like, and it could be a part of you, the story you tell the media. So they are more interested in your story. So you can get PR. So my strategy is that is use product hunt as kind of like a step two and not a step one. Because usually it's like step one. Hey, look at my product, but nobody gives a shit because nobody knows you. And so my strategy is like, okay, once you establish some credibility an audience and some momentum launch on product and then and then it, you can get a chance of you know kind of like shining and from that uh you open up doors to other pr opportunities and that's like way more potent for your you know for your marketing long term yeah love that i'm excited for that day when it comes um and we're gonna try to see that do this one more time before yes, we wrap I, I, I know what happened i think it's because i gave you the special link and it's yeah. only in certain cases that i should use that one and it probably fucked something up i think maybe okay we're gonna just use no, this personality it doesn't confirm make any these values because right the first time i did it it was like boom popped right in but yeah, now that i'm it's instant. I, I have no idea it's what's happening. Instant. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's the thing, you know, it's, it's actually a good sign. It's like, it, cause it happened to Steve Jobs with the first iPhone, iPhone. Like it's just like, it started like crashing in front of everyone in the presentation. Yeah. And, you know, and it's like, it's a good sign. It's just sign I'm working on something big, you know, cause like it's crashing when yeah. it's like the, the time to show everyone, but maybe I can share my screen to show like a results page quickly to people. That would be uh, great. So it's gonna, I'm gonna do that very quickly. So Miriam, that was, and the result was playful and yeah, an original. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, playful startup that. with an original voice. Yeah, that's it, okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually enjoying my first public uh, fail at showing my product. I'm trying to reframe this as a positive. Okay, so it worked instantly on my side, obviously, because it's of just- Of course. Uh, so let me just share that. 
Uh, oh yeah, I have to share my whole screen. So let me see how I can do that. Okay. Hiding a couple of things. And good. Good. okay. So here's what we have. Okay, share that. Okay, so you should see my screen now. So that's what was loading on your side, okay? Ah, uh, okay, so see what was happening. It was, it was probably very confused because it was pulling in my title from the first time I took the quiz. And then these are definitely different logos from what I had the first time around. So fun. Interesting colors that it comes through with. Yeah, you know, that's why I suggested education because it seemed like, mm -hmm. you know. How cute, I love that. And so all these logos will, I mean, I can show you the actual paper sketch that my wife did for all of these. You know, it's all coming from her creative mind. So cool. Definitely would love to see people test out this platform and share your logos and see what comes out because it's just fun to kind of take the quiz too and yeah and that's because at the end of it even if you don't buy your logo you get a bit more uh, info about okay what am i building and what is my brand identity mm -hmm. and actually we don't advertise it yet but if you click there save my process and you sign up which is completely free and like takes two seconds you actually get a complete branding course that my wife wrote but it's a unique course for each brand personality so she actually wrote like five courses mm. and so you get a course about colors uh, uh symbols fonts how to actually write your name should you use all caps lowercase uppercase what do you do with that and it's just telling you exactly, you know, giving you information about that. And so, um, you know, we should actually do a better job of advertising it, but you know, that's the way it is for now. Yeah. So yeah, you know, that's the platform. And just to, it, just to show quickly people like, is there one in there that you like particularly that you want to see? Um, there was one up above it had like a kind of like a little wing things happening. Up a little uh, bit more, I okay, think. Yeah, which one? Uh, this there one? There it is. Yeah. Like this the... one? Or like which one? The first one. This one? Yeah. Okay. That kind of draw my attention a little bit. And so, yeah, so that the step two is you can actually, you know, you have a different kind of color schemes you can pick. Um, oh. And each of these color schemes and each of these fonts is actually telling a story of your brand identity so they're all playful and original all of them and they've all been created again by my wife for this purpose uh i mean not the fonts the fonts were selected she didn't create the fonts right uh, and we use google fonts because it's it's that way people can use the fonts for free on their websites you know once they uh if they choose to buy a logo and they want to use it uh and you can see for each of these, we have a precise meaning uh, of like what it is, you know, and what it, what story it tells, mm. you know, so we can help you, you know, make a choice. Yeah. So let's say, you know, so this would be a bit more, you know, assertive. So let's go, okay, I remember the one you showed me, uh, like the bootstrapping books. I'm trying to go something very playful. Okay, this one, let's say this one. And then you can kind of like see what it looks like as a final result. Okay. Okay, cool. You can kind of like look at that. And we're actually working right now on a product that will give you a complete guide of how to apply the brand beyond the logo. Yeah. And like a second step. And that's it. Like you can just buy it right away. And if you buy it, you like you receive the files to your inbox in two minutes. I love could, this. I could definitely see this being like useful to people oh, that are starting out. Funny. I'm actually automatically writing to myself on the chat, which never happened to me. <laughs> it's basically an automated message I set up um, that when somebody reaches the buy page and if I'm online, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Uh, stop share. 
if I reach the buy, if somebody reached the buy page while I am online, because right now I have my chat window open, like in yeah. case the customer comes in, it sends them a message. Hey, I'm online. Do you want to talk about your logo? So it just, it was very meta. That's so that. funny. Well, how can the community support you? I really appreciate you coming on and chatting with me today. Well, you know, it's just cool to be able to talk about this and have people understand. I mean, it's awesome to get people to see that they see the value and they get value from it because here building the kind of an isolation and it was hard to like have almost no feedback because we didn't share it with anyone and feel like are we crazy and now you know we saw like more than 300 now and we see that okay no we're not crazy people love it and so i think the best way to support me is like uh just take the quiz and see if you get value out of it. Like that's really all I can ask for because I'm always happy to see people like, if like, if just one person tries it and loves it and it gives and it helps them with their brand, you know, I would be, I would be so happy. So yeah, just give it a shot. Like it's completely, as you see, like it's like five minutes, like tops and it's like, you don't need to pay for anything up front. It's only if you find something you love and then you want the files that you pay. So yeah, just give it a go. Love that. Well, definitely we'll be telling everyone to take it. And uh, you know, I'm a big fan. You have my support and I'm excited for just watching you continue on this journey and feel you like bootstrapping and doing all of that. So yeah, wishing awesome. you the best. And thanks again for chatting with me today. Yeah, sure. It was my pleasure. All right. We'll see you on Twitter. Yeah. Bye. Bye.